The Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by CNMC, Syngenta Canada, and the Alberta Wheat Commission. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Wheat School. We are at Ridgetown College today catching up with University of Guelph professor Dr. Dave Hooker. Dave, how's it going? I'm great. It's an awesome day. Awesome. You, you said it, sir. Hey, and it is... It's that time of the year where we're thinking about T3 fungicide and whether to go and to time it and the return and the response. And I want to talk about some of the research that you've done on the response, the yield response to T3 fungicides. But before that, let's talk about timing and the strategy to go or not to go. And you talk about the three windows of weather. Tell yeah. us about that. Yeah. Well, the decision to go or not to go, every decision, it seems like this year, is could be a huge decision. Like, if we make a bad decision of some management factor, it could result in tremendous loss potential. And right now, we are right in the middle of this T3 decision. Should we apply a T3 fungicide or not? And so our data shows tremendous responses to a T3 very consistent and potentially tremendous responses to a T3. So I'm of the mindset, when I'm trying to decide whether to go with a T3 or not, I my default for decision is to spray. Hmm. And so if I'm looking for a reason not to spray, sometimes I have to dig pretty deep and often I fall short of, um, of the decision of not to spray. So usually I spray, and this is due to our data, our, yeah. da our data yeah. set is data driven. Yeah. Now I wanna talk about the data. We'll look at that at the end, but I wanna take, take us through those three windows of weather. And uh, you know, you, you, basically in the middle there you have day zero, but you wanna be thinking about it before then. Yeah, that, that's right. And so one of our main decisions or reason to spray a T3 fungicide, of course, is to control fusarium, to reduce dawn. And I should say not control, but suppress fusarium because there's no fungicide that will control fusarium, like we, unlike weed control, controlling weeds. So in our work about 20 years ago now, uh, I've devoted quite a significant portion of my career looking at these different windows, or these different uh, factors involved in elevated dawn accumulation, the mycotoxin in wheat and fusarium head blight. And we've shown the data set over 800 fields that we sampled. We showed these three windows. These three windows kept popping up. The first window is, um, it occurs between four and seven days before heading. And so this is like day minus four to day minus seven. So about a week before heading, and this is what we call the inoculum production phase. So in order for the disease to infect our crop, we have to have some inoculum being produced. And this window is very much associated with how much inoculum or whether that inoculum will be produced given weather. And so we know that rainfall during uh, that phase before just about a week before heading, uh, we know that rainfall and warm temperatures really favor inoculum production. Mm -hmm. And as you know that in order for infection to, to take place, we have to have the path pathogen there. And that inoculum production is very important for the pathogen to be there in order to infect the crop. Yeah. And if you see it there, obviously there's the key um, to spray. Then you get to day zero and you get into your second phase. Yeah, the second phase is what we call the infection phase. And this is the flowering phase. And so as soon as you see some flowers on the head, it's in that critical period. And our models suggest between three and six days after heading, so day plus three to day plus six, that is our critical period for infection. And so we have high relative humidity, uh, rainfall, uh, it, you don't need uh, a rainfall to have a wet canopy throughout the day, so you could have a heavy dew followed by high relative humidity, and that will that will be like a rain day in terms of infection. And then fairly warm temperatures, but not too warm. If we get temperatures above 32 degrees Celsius, um, we tend to see a lower risk of dawn just because that mm. pathogen is unable to infect yeah. or that infection does not take place. And that last phase is the growth phase, the growth stage. Yeah, that, that growth phase, of course, temperature, warm temperatures around 25 degrees Celsius is ideal. And also, um, of course, for that growth phase, 
phase to occur, you have to have the infection, like in those associated with those first two critical periods. If we don't have any infection, there's no growth to take place. So that growth phase is really dependent on how much infection uh, takes place within that infection period. Yeah. Now you're going to time your T3 in one of those phases throughout that period. And I want to talk now about the results of some research that you did, oh, maybe 10 years ago, yeah. on what, uh, I guess, the yield impact can be of a T3. Tell us about what you found. Yeah, so in order to have a decision to spray or not make a good decision, of course, we should pencil the numbers out. And fusarium headlight control, dawn control, that quality factor, that's an important decision. But we also know that there is a yield component to that as well. And our data set is so consistent. And Peter Johnson has very similar data in field scale trials as well. Peter Johnson and Shane McClure, very similar results that shows that we, on average, we have 8.8 .8 bushel per acre responses uh, to a fungicide application at T3. But that varies. About 50% of our data, hundreds of comparisons now, hundreds mm. of comparisons, we have an, of a, a range between 5.5 and about 11.5 bushel per acre. So on average, 8.8 .8 bushel per acre. 50% of our data is between 5.5 and 11.5 bushel per acre, and that, that is very consistent. So only 25% of our data is less than 5.5 bushel per acre. And so just very few comparisons. We have very consistent response in terms of, of yield. And given the wheat prices, what they are today, 15 like, bucks? and maybe some growers are thinking, oh, hey, I contracted my wheat at a very low price. I'm kind of bummed out about that. Well, these extra yield responses could bump up your yields and maybe you'd be in a higher premium yep. in, terms of, in terms of your wheat. So there's all kinds of decisions that are involved with a T3 application and also also, don't forget tramp loss as well, because that could be a significant part, a significant cost to that T3 application. Final question for you, and that is about variety here. And you talk about, you know, some varieties will respond better to T3s than, than others. Um, talk about GoCereals.ca and uh, the, right. what, what type of resource that can be for growers. Right. And so right before I do that, we do have... 50% of our data shows higher than 8.8 .8 bushel per acre. Just tremendous yield responses. We know that some varieties respond more than others. And so in order to get that data, we have a lot of um, trial data, but Go Cereals, uh, uh, Ontario Cereal Crop Committee, has been doing trials for years now, looking at fungicide versus no fungicide. And if you want to know if your, fung if your variety is a responsive variety or not to a T3, just look at that data on GoCereals.ca, find your variety, look at the fungicide versus no fungicide, and if your variety is a highly responsive variety, that data point could be above 8.8 .8 bushel per acre. Mm, awesome. Dave, always great to have you on the Wheat School. Thanks for the invitation. Thanks. It's been fun.